in this After Effects tutorial, we're gonna create a photorealistic gallery. Hey, what's going on internet? Josh Noel from Sunduck Film. So we got some photos, we got a gallery, let's go. Let's go into our new composition here, 1920 by 1080. I already have a photo in here. Just go ahead and drop in any photo of your choice. Let's go up to layer, new, solid. And we'll just call this one maybe just card. I don't know why, but make sure it's set to white and make sure it's comp size. Click OK and put it underneath our uh, photo layer. And then let's just duplicate our card layer by going up to edit, duplicate. And let's go up to layer, solid settings, and let's just set this to like a darker shade of gray here. And click new. And then let's go ahead and turn off our photo layer for now. And let's hit S on the keyboard for car 2 to bring up the scale. And let's scale this down. So we want to keep the sides, you know, completely, you know, congruent. So let's go ahead and break the chain here for scale and just decrease the Y value just by a touch until it's kind of like exactly the same, uh, you know, width and height all around like that. All right, and that's pretty decent. And then let's turn our picture right back on. And what we want to do is just make sure that this picture is large enough to cover up this, uh, you know, gray layer here. So let's go ahead and just increase the scale, and that should be okay. And then let's make sure you go to the track mat. If you don't see track mat, toggle switches and modes until you see it. And go ahead and put this layer, the picture underneath the car 2 layer, and set the track mat to alpha mat. So every time we swap in a new picture, we want to make sure that the picture is alpha matte underneath our card 2 layer. And what's great about this, we can scale this up and reposition. It's always going to keep that shape as long as it's the full width of the square. Um, but that's looking pretty good. And then let's go ahead and come here, select all of our layers, go up to layer, pre-compose. And we'll just call this one uh, photo 1. Okay. So if we want to create some more photos now, let's go to our uh, project folder here. And let's select photo 1 and go up to edit, duplicate. And now that it's its own independent composition, we can double click this uh, composition and, you know, I can go to my images over here. I can select a, another image. Maybe I'll do this um, wedding photo here. And all I have to do here, if you had the same resolution, what you can do is make sure that the uh, picture and your, comp or your timeline down here is selected and hold down Alt on your keyboard and drag in your new image right on top of it and it'll automatically swap it out. So you can go ahead and go through this process several times, create maybe at least four different uh, photo slides, and I'll be right back once we have four created. So I've created two more photo compositions, and let's go back to our main you know, tutorial composition, and let's drag in both all three of these uh, other three photo comps, or the rest of the photo comps that we've created. And now we can come here, toggle switches and modes, and make these 3D layers. So our top photo here is going to be our dominant photo in the gallery. So let's go ahead and turn off the other three photos for now. Let's hit P on our keyboard for position. And maybe we can you know, scale down the Z position by a touch. Uh, maybe hit R on our keyboard uh, for the rotation properties. And we can kind of like come here and kind of just like rotate it by a touch. So it's going to look like it's in 3D space a little bit. And it's going to look pretty nice. Go ahead and just adjust whatever you want. And then maybe turn on photo 2. You know, hit P on our keyboard, bring that back into Z space by hitting this, you know, third parameter right here, if you can't see that, by the way. And we can go put it all the way back here, you know, maybe position the X and Y values here and put it, like, in a very, you know, strategic place. Maybe I'll put it back over here. Uh, we can also play with the uh, rotation properties by a little bit, you know. And then we'll go to photo three and we'll do the same exact stuff. We'll go ahead and just offset it and make it look nice. Okay, so I positioned some photos here. Maybe we'll go back to photo one and just extend this out by a little bit more, make it a little bit bigger so we can kind of cover up that uh, sort of space at the bottom here. And what's great about this is now we can kind of, we want to animate each of these position properties and maybe also the rotation properties by a touch. So just select all the layers here, add a keyframe for position for each of the layers and go to the end of your animation, which in my case will just be six seconds. And we'll come here and kind of just you know position the X, Y parameters and do your best to make sure that there's no uh, like transparency or anything like that. So maybe we'll come here, move this over by a touch, mess with the Y and even the Z values by a little bit. And what I'm gonna do for the main photo here is go ahead and just position this forward, the Z value, and go to the end here and kind of bring that down by a little bit so it's not overwhelmingly big and if we have any tears just cover that up so now we'll kind of have this animation and we just have a little bit of space over there so we'll go ahead and cover that up as well 
So one thing you wanna make sure after you set your animation keyframes is you wanna make sure that none of the images are you know, tearing through your other images just because the Z space is not exact, but you should be okay if that's not happening. So now we go ahead and create some of the stylistic effects and kind of make this a little bit more realistic and I guess more vintage. So let's go up to layer, new adjustment layer. Let's go to effect, color correction, and let's add the tritone effect, which is right over here. And we can come here, keep the everything the same here, and maybe we can set this down to 50%. And I'll kind of you know, make it a little bit more grayed out, and I think that's a pretty interesting look. Then once again, let's go to effect, color correction, and let's add the brightness and contrast effect. Let's set the contrast all the way to 100, and it's gonna look kind of ugly, but we're really you know making the image pop here. And let's go to effect, color correction, curves. And this is really just a style. You know, there's tons of things you can do, but I'm gonna come here, go to the RGB, and bring this first point down to maybe this first line right here, and take the uh, bottom point here and bring it up just so I touch like maybe to like right here, and maybe also bring the bright point back up that I touch. So what we did in the brightness and contrast effect, we just increased the contrast all the way out, and then the curves effect is going to just level out the uh, blown out parts and the clipped parts of our image. So it's gonna create more of a, I guess, a nicer look. And let's go to uh, effect, color correction, lumetri color. Now, if you're a couple of versions back from the most up-to-date version, you might not have lumetri color, but don't really worry about it. I'm just gonna go to the color wheels and you know decrease the shadows by a little bit and point this to the greens by a touch. And then maybe bring the highlights to the warmer part here. So we're just creating a nice little, uh, I guess, vintage effect here, and I think I like it a lot. So we can come here, maybe rename this layer to color, and that should be good. And then let's go ahead and create another adjustment layer, and we'll call this one uh, background blur. And let's go to effect blur, Gaussian blur. And let's go ahead and put this adjustment layer underneath photo one, or, or should I say our main photo here, and let's just increase the blurriness all the way to like 10 or so. And that's pretty cool. And what we're gonna do is, I'm gonna create a camera here in a second, but so I don't have to come back and do this later. Let's add a keyframe for blurriness, and let's go to the end of our animation, and let's go ahead and increase the blurriness to maybe like 20 or so. So as we zoom in, which that's kind of what we're doing here, I guess, uh, we're gonna go ahead and create that sort of effect of like things are gonna get more out of focus as our main image comes closer to us. So now let's go up to layer new camera and I'm just gonna use the 50 millimeter preset. And you know, I'm gonna go back to our photo one here and I'm not gonna have this zoom out at, at us so much. And I'm gonna go here and we'll bring this right down over here. Let's kind of retouch that a little bit. So I'm gonna go to our camera over here and open the transform tab and add a keyframe for point of interest and position. Make sure you're at the beginning of the timeline here. Go to the end of your animation. I'm gonna grab our camera tools here at the top. I'm gonna grab like the track Z camera tool and I'm just gonna track in here. And I'm just zooming in. And then I'm gonna grab the track XY camera tool and kind of try to drag this in the middle. And then also I can add the orbit camera tool and kind of add just a little bit of, you know, rotation, maybe just readjust some of these parameters by a touch. So, you know, it looks pretty decent and, you know, interesting. So now we're getting an even more dynamic camera movement and, you know, just, I think it looks pretty awesome. Let's create another adjustment layer and we'll call this one radial uh, blur. And we're actually not gonna apply the radial blur effect. What we're gonna do is hover over our uh, rectangle tool and we're gonna select the ellipse tool Double click the ellipse tool. Make sure the, before you do that, make sure the adjustment layer is selected and double click the ellipse tool and set the mask one to subtract. And then let's go up to effect blur, Gaussian blur. And let's just go ahead and really increase this, maybe 20 ish there. And let's hit F on our keyboard for mask feather. And let's just increase that to maybe 40 or so. And they'll kind of blur it out nicely. And we're kind of getting this edge blur here, which I really like. And make sure to check on repeat edge pixels for the Gaussian blur. So we can kind of keep that repeated there. And, you know, I think that's pretty interesting. So we're kind of getting more focused onto the center of the image. And these background photos are just there for, uh, you know, display. So we have our gallery design and it's looking pretty nice. But we can add some more stuff to this. We can really spice this up. 
and you know make it look like we did a lot more work than we actually did so I have some downloadable elements I'll provide these links in the description of this video uh, but I have some light leaks and go ahead and just download them if you don't know what a light leak is just download it it's really awesome these are all free so go ahead and make sure to download it but let's go ahead and drag in a light leak here and basically if we scrub through here you know we kind of have like these sort of flares if you will and what we're going to do is toggle switch to the modes and we're going to set the mode to screen and now we kind of have these nice flares here on the side now it's a little too much for my taste so let's go ahead and start dialing this down let's go to effect color correction and we'll add the tritone effect uh, maybe we'll set this mid-tone to like blue or so kind of like this and then we'll hit t on our keyboard for opacity and maybe we'll bring it down to like 50 percent so it's not as intense and overwhelming like it is and we kind of have that nice little blurred out feel and i'm going to add just two more of these light leaks and we'll, what we want to do is make sure that these are kind of scattered over time here so we want to make sure we're also getting a nice equal distribution of the flare so maybe i'll go to layer uh, transform flip uh, horizontal and this one will be on this side set it to screen and then we'll go back up to effect and my computer's running a little slow here uh, and that does look really nice i might just actually keep that orange i do like that but i would just use the tritone effect if you don't like the orange look because all these light leaks that um that are in the download link are all orange of course you can buy your own professional pack and it's going to look nice um and this is definitely a professional pack for sure but uh let's go in here to screen and uh let's go to effect sorry layer transform maybe flip vertical and layer transform flip horizontal now this might be a little too much uh you know light leakage but um let's go ahead and just offset some of these by a little bit and so we can cover up our full animation here so boom we should be okay and then let's go back up to effect color correction tritone and maybe we'll make this one a little bit more pink if i can select the effect let's go to maybe make it purple or so and I think that looks pretty nice. Maybe we'll just go here, lower the opacity to maybe like 75%. And it, it all depend on what type of light leak you're using, but this is pretty awesome. And then let's go ahead and make sure that these light leaks are underneath our radial blur. So they'll blend in there. It's a little bit more nice. And let's go back up here to my projects. And I have a camera grunge. I just Googled this. I'll provide the download link once again. But let's come here, bring this on top of our, underneath our radial blur. And this will kind of just add some depth into our you know image a little bit so let's go ahead to the modes and set it to add and let's hit p in our keyboard for position alt click the stopwatch let's type in wiggle open parenthesis 0.5 comma maybe 150 and close parenthesis and i'll zoom in real fast so you guys can see what i typed out there so wiggle open parenthesis 0.5 comma 150 close parenthesis and click off of that once you're done typing it out and one thing we need to be mindful of is that this will kind of be juxtaposition all over the place. So let's hit S on the keyboard for scale and you know scale this forward. And now we kind of have like another element here. Maybe we'll hit T on our keyboard for opacity and set this down to like 75%. So it's not as intense. And maybe we can even go down to 50%. But now we kind of created this very nice photo gallery and things are looking very beautiful. And hopefully, you know, your client will like it. And then when you're done, you can toggle switch the modes. And if you want, you can turn on motion blur for pretty much all your photo layers and make sure you turn it on at the top. And then you should be able to render it out. And I forgot one thing. If you want, we go into this photo layer and we can always type out some text. We can put anything that we want in here. Uh, I can type in photo uh, gallery. I know you guys can't see that. But then I, maybe what I can do is grab like a actual box, make sure nothing is selected and kind of just draw out this rectangle and you know position our text on top of here, maybe make this a touch smaller. And there is a typo in it, so better fix that. You know, so we can kind of have these elements and we can kind of rearrange it anywhere. And what's great about this technique is that if I go back into our main comp over here, that this text box will automatically track with our photo. So if you want to say something kind of romantic or something you know the family would like, you can go ahead and do that or whatever your client, maybe a logo, you do whatever you want and it will automatically be tracked and it will blend in with our footage. So I think that's really interesting. And if you were following along with this tutorial, this is what you should have gotten. And you know, I know this is my original design, but it's pretty much all the same stuff. So 
Hope you guys did enjoy this video. If you did, please drop a like and subscribe to the channel for more After Effects tutorials just like this. And please be sure to hit me up on my social media networks. Those links are in the description of this video. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching this video and I hope you have a good day.